back, everybody. Devil Speakeasy at DevNexus 2022 in person. Yes. And uh, someone who I didn't see for more than two years. I know. It's amazing. Sir, two it's years. It's great <laughs> to uh, see you in person. Thank you. It's been great to see you in person this week as well. It just feels so surreal being surreal. <laughs> around other people after two years. It's I like love <laughs> when good things happen. And this yeah. is definitely good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, how uh, how have you been? What what's going on? What's new? What's exciting? <laughs> well, I would say I've been doing well. I had to adjust, obviously, not to not being able to connect with people face to face because I spent at least half of my time before the pandemic connecting with people face to face in person. So I had to make some shifts in how I do that, um, which of course I did, and I've been having a great time connecting with developers in different ways over the last two years with developers in the Java community. And then I also, just right before, kind of uh, like in February 2020, I had started working on a new initiative, so I carried that through the last two years, and I'm going to continue to work on that. And so that has been great. That we want to talk about, <laughs> yes, right? exactly. So that's that what I've been doing. Next generation of Java developers. <laughs> yeah. Tell me all about it. Yeah. So well, you know, around the same time, right? It was the 25th anniversary of Java, yeah. and so a lot of times, you know, when you're looking at a community and looking at you know a technology anniversary, you, there's a tendency to look back on what's happened, but what I wanted to do was look forward. So, you know, I'm doing different things around that. Okay, we're celebrating Java's 25 years old. It's still the, one of the most popular languages. It's still the most in demand by employers. It's the most highly paid skill. So what can we do as a community to bring up that next generation of Java developers and ensure that Java continues to remain successful? for you know the generations to come so, so what can we do <laughs> well i think there's lots of things we can do that's why i said with the anniversary right it all of us as a community have a role to play in doing that but what i looked at specifically and what we t started talking about in the jcp executive committee was um, this role of java in education so you know every 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 year we have elections in the jcp and we can bring in new members on the executive committee, and we had gotten a member who's Ken Fogel, and he's a professor, and so he was very interested in, you know, discussing this topic. And so the executive committee discussed that um, topic, you know, f over several meetings, and we had a working group um, in 2020. And um, obviously, like you said, there's so many things you can do around. And making Java successful, bringing up that next generation of Java developers. But what we concluded, and you know, with my leadership decided, was that let's work to enable Java community leaders around the world to work with younger or more junior developers in their local communities okay. to introduce them to Java. Because you know, lots of discussions that we had was, you know, it's developers need to know so many different tools and languages and they when they work on projects most likely they're going to be touching java code so they're going to need to know java but a lot of times these days people are learning other things first right. so that y y younger more junior developer has that tendency to think like that you know that's not what they should be learning or working on they've learned this and they're good and they're going to go out into industry and you know just I start know. working on projects and be amazing <laughs> this is not right. right so what we want to do is a little bit of education around the fact that you're going to be touching java in your code when you're working in projects and industry so we want to introduce you to some tools on how you can learn Java. There's lots of tools out there that are available. And we want to in introduce you to the community, right? So if you haven't ever worked um, before in you know professional setting in software development, you really don't know how to get a job. And these days, the fact is, most people get a job through their network. So one of the best ways to network and meet other people would be at a Java user group. Of course, so, of course. And <laughs> yeah, that's a great. It solves <laughs> a great problem of how do you get started with the networking that you have to. Right, right. So you learn something new and you network at the same time. And because with the JCP, we've had a, a close relationship with Java user groups all around the world for you know 
some time, decades, <laughs> that you know it makes sense that you know we um, give them some tools to be able to continue this effort. And the thing is, it's not really a brand new effort because there are certain Java user groups all around the world who've already been doing this. Like for instance, Bruno Souza, who's um, the representative for SoJava in Brazil. <laughs> He happens to be here. I didn't even know, but you'll know when he's here. He's how, <laughs> how much you pay her, Bruno? <laughs> well, his, his user group and community leaders have been working with uh, universities in their community for some time, right? So this is not a new idea, but the, the newness is to put it all together under an initiative and right really an official, program. official program that also brings together the learning from the different user groups because a lot of different user groups you know, are doing their own activities in their local community, but they want to know well, what have other people done, or if you're thinking about starting it and haven't done it before, um, what are some tools that I can use to do it so it makes it easier to start up. So as a, as a community, the Java user group leaders can come together and discuss, these are some of the things that we've done around Java and education, and this is what we've learned. And then also um, with a small working group from the executive committee and also from other JUG leaders, we've created a couple of presentations that um, jug leaders or community leaders can use to go out and give a presentation to people who are interested in software development, not about teaching them Java, but I'll, this is why you might want to learn Java. Like right. this is a story of how successful Java has been. These are some of the big brands, you know, that are using Java, like NASA is really popular and all the social media, you know, things, mm -hmm. the apps that they use every day that they're right. using right. Java and then, you know, show them how they can learn it and give them some tools. That's one presentation. And then another presentation, which is, again, not teaching them Java, but saying, hey, maybe you've heard of Java before, but did you know these are some of the modern features it incorporates and compare it to a few languages that maybe they'd used before and show them that you know they, they can add this to their repertoire of skills and be more successful. So, so yeah, that's what we created. Right. So uh, <laughs> I guess an action item here that uh, you should be involved with your local Java community. Well, yeah, well, definitely. So I think that's another thing is there's so many Java developers all around the world, and there's close to 500 Java user groups, but the majority of developers, I don't think, actually have exactly. connected and with a Java that. user group yeah. in your community. And most likely, considering how many we have, you would be able to connect with the Java user group. And it is a great resource if you're a more senior developer as well, because um, that's where you can network. Most of the Java user group presentations are very um, advanced technical talks, yeah. so they're looking at future directions. They're not you know, looking at more legacy um, things or introductory beginning, teach me how to code in this thing. It's more of an opportunity to look um, to advance your career and develop your skills um, technically, but also to meet other people and have that sense of community and belonging and, and help you to um, really, that's like, I would say, you know, that's one of the hallmarks of the Java um, development community is the community, and that really is where you can connect with it on a more regular basis rather than just maybe if you go to a conference here and there. Yeah, that's for yeah. sure, and I think that uh, the beginner content, the one-on-one -on -one content mm -hmm. is, is also very, very important, and we tend to overlook it just because, like, the curse of knowledge, right? Right, right. Because we assume that if we know it, it's not a big deal and everybody can learn it. Right. And then we only <laughs> present stuff that we think that is an achievement. Right. You don't want to bore people with the one-on-one, -on -one, but right. a lot of times. Actually, we forget <laughs> that one-on-one -on -one is also an achievement. It is. For, for the majority of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have that in you to actually go ahead and, and, and speak and educate yeah. the next generation of Java developers, mm -hmm. that's priceless. That's yeah. Well, that's going to also, if, you, if you're, so on the other side, if you're running a Java user group, it's going to help you to ensure the success of your user group beyond, you know, your time in your career, right? So the longevity of that local community. So that's you're bringing in the chain. younger, <laughs> bringing in the that's younger generation funnel. and they can lead and, you know, bring in, bring in more people. So, yeah. and, and that energy, I mean, I think that's what's really great too about a conference like this. You have a range of people. You have people who this is their first conference. And then you have other people who've been coming here. I think I was talking to someone at lunch who's been coming, you know, ever since the first edition, you know. 2006, I think. Yeah, 2006, that's yeah. what he said. Yeah. I was 
so that was surprising. I've been coming maybe since 2014 or something, which I think is a long time, but um, to this conference at Devon Expo. Yeah, so. Devon Expo is also legendary. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. And uh, that thing, other thing I really like about Devon Nexus, and this is where I get a lot of feedback, is when I lead the Women in Technology Breakfast, which I sometimes do and I did this year. And that's really interesting to see um, a lot of the women who come to the breakfast have never been to a conference and then just understand, you know, what it's like for them to experience this, but and be able to have like that opportunity before the conference starts to kind of maybe meet a few people or have an expectation, and also like I always try to tell them, you know, come here thinking like I'm gonna I'm a, I'm gonna try to deliver a talk next time, you know, based on something I learned. Yeah, we, we need that. We need that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, so, of and I think that's a really valuable talk, giving a, and you know, giving a talk about I don't know how this is how I, my experience of learning this technology, yeah. and yeah. you know, because because like you, like I said, you have to learn something new all the time, even if you're a Java developer already. Exactly. Not that no, you're, you're going to be learning other techniques and tools all along the way. I think they call it upskilling now. Like the World Economic Forum calls it upskilling. upskilling. Okay. And employers have that expectation in all industries, not just in technology, but that's been a shift in the pandemic is that m the majority of employers now expect employees to be learning new skills and technologies on the job. I mean, that's like if you are <laughs> just, if you are stalling in place, you're actually going backwards, right? You have to, you yeah. have to keep going forward all the time. Yeah. yeah. Learning to learn. Yeah, learning to learn. <laughs> Yeah. Heather, thank you very much. That was very interesting. And I, I oh, yeah. Love, I love how you, you glow when you <laughs> speak about that. Really, I mean, the passion <laughs> is unmistakable. Yes. And this, well is, this is great. Thank you. Well, I guess we should say if they want to learn more about Java and education, oh they yes. can join uh, yes. the initiative. Um, there's a page on jcp.org called Java and Education. If you just go to the home page, you can see it. And then um, you can find the presentations if you wanted to deliver those to any students. And then there's a link to a groups.io alias that you can join for updates. And we have a GitHub wiki page. So that's how you can yeah, learn about it. Or on Twitter. Or just connect with me on Twitter oh, yeah. or whatever. And the Twitter, and the Twitter is, is there. Right, uh, <laughs> At the bottom. Here? Yeah, right Down. Here. Yep. Right, right there. Here. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, thanks for having Thank me. I appreciate it. It was fun. a pleasure as usual. And Thank uh, you. We'll see you next time. Yes. Thank you. Definitely.